I'm Mr. Beat. I'm not the President of the United States. This dude is. He makes up the executive branch of the American government, the branch that carries out or enforces the laws that the legislative branch makes and the judicial branch interprets. But it's not just him. It's his vice president who is currently this dude. But it's not just these two dudes. In fact, there's a huge team working with them. It's commonly referred to as the cabinet. In this video, I will explain the purpose and history of the cabinet. So let's start with the Constitution. Article 2, Section 2 says the president gets some help. He or she doesn't have to do the job alone. The cabinet's official role is to give the president advice based on their expertise. The Constitution actually doesn't say anything explicitly about a cabinet. The word cabinet comes from the Italian word cabinetto, which means a small private room. You know, a place to talk about important stuff without interruptions. The first president to use the term was James Madison, who called his meetings, quote, the president's cabinet. Over the years, as the country has grown, the cabinet has grown. George Washington, the first president, and still my favorite one, by the way, held the first cabinet meeting on February 25th, 1793. He had just four department heads there. His Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of War, Henry Knox, and Attorney General, Edmund Randolph. Yeah, Jefferson and Hamilton spent much of the meeting fighting over the creation of a national bank. Today, the meetings are bigger. The cabinet officially includes the heads of 15 executive departments. So what the heck are these cabinet members in charge of? Well... A lot. The Secretary of State, who is currently Rex Tillerson, mostly deals with foreign policy. Tillerson presides over the State Department, which employs around 69,000 people and has a 2017 budget of over $50 billion. The Secretary of the Treasury, who is currently Steve Mnuchin, is the President's Chief Economic Advisor. Although the position used to oversee federal law enforcement agencies until 2003, the Department of the Treasury employs over 86,000 people and has a 2017 budget of over $13.3 billion. The Secretary of War is now called the Secretary of Defense. I guess that sounds less aggressive and more like, we're all about peace and love, man. Anyway, that changed in 1947. The Secretary of Defense, who is currently James Mattis, is in charge of, well, you know, defense. More specifically, command and control and the carrying out of missions. The Department of Defense is the largest department by far. It employs over 2.87 million people and its 2017 budget is over $582.7 billion. The Attorney General, currently Jeff Sessions, is the chief law enforcement officer and highest lawyer of the federal government. Sessions heads the Department of Justice, which employs over 113,000 people and and its 2017 budget is over $29 billion. The U.S. created the Department of the Interior on March 3rd, 1849. Today, the Secretary of the Interior is Ryan Zinke. He and his department are responsible for maintaining and conserving most federal land and natural resources, and currently employs over 70,000 people with an annual budget in 2017 of $13.4 billion. On May 15th, 1862, Abraham Lincoln created what is today called the Department of Agriculture. Agriculture. Today, the Secretary of Agriculture is Sonny Perdue, and he and his department are responsible for carrying out federal laws relating to farming, forestry, and food. Hey, I like food. The department has around 106,000 employees, and its 2017 budget is over $151 billion. On Valentine's Day, 1903, the U.S. created what is today called the Department of Commerce, which is all about looking for ways to grow the American economy. Today, it's led by the Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross. His department employs around 44,000 people, and its 2017 budget is $9.8 billion. On March 5th, 1913, the last day of his presidency, William Howard Taft created the Department of Labor, which is all about finding ways to help workers, those seeking work, and those seeking a way out of work. Headed by the Secretary of Labor, who is today Alex Acosta, the department employs more than 17,000 people, and its 2017 budget is over $12.8 billion. In 1933, Frances Perkins became the Secretary of Labor and the first woman to ever serve in the cabinet. The U.S. established the Federal Security Agency on July 1st, 1939, 
2009. That morphed into the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare on April 11th, 1953. But today, it's called the Department of Health and Human Services, currently headed by Eric Hargan. The department promotes policy that focuses on the health of Americans, and recently gained a lot of power after Obamacare went into effect. It currently employs around 80,000 people, and its 2017 budget is $1.2 billion. On September 9th, 1965, President Lyndon Johnson created the Department of Housing and Urban Development as part of his Great Society initiative. Its mission is to help Americans get quality, affordable housing, but it is also used to coordinate disaster response across the country. Currently headed by Ben Carson, the department employs over 8,400 people, and its 2017 budget is over $60 billion. Congress created the Department of Transportation on October 15, 1966, to help provide the country with a safe and efficient transportation network. Currently headed by Elaine Chow, the department employs over 58,000 people, and its 2017 budget is over $98.1 billion. It's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> the third agency of government, yeah. I, would, I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see, oh I can't. The third one, I can't, sorry. <laughs> Oops. Well, he couldn't remember the name of the department, but I bet he remembers it now. He's currently in charge of it. This dude is Rick Perry, the Secretary of Energy and head of the Department of Energy, which is in charge of the country's nuclear weapons program and nuclear reaction production for the Navy. It also aids the country's energy needs, whether it be through energy conservation or research or waste disposal. The U.S. founded the department on August 4th, 1977. Its 2017 budget was over $32 billion and it employs more than 106,000 people. The U.S. created the Department of Education on October 17, 1979. Currently headed by Betsy DeVos, its main purpose is to manage and coordinate federal assistance to education, but it also collects data on the country's schools and enforces federal educational laws. It employs more than 4,400 people, and its 2017 budget is more than $209 billion. Yeah, that's a lot of student loans and grants for college. While the U.S. has provided benefits to its veterans dating back to the Revolutionary War, it didn't create what's now called the Department of Veterans Affairs until 1930 and didn't become cabinet level until 1989. The current Secretary of Veterans Affairs is David Shulkin, and the department's main job is to provide essential services to American veterans. Its 2017 budget is more than $182 billion, and it employs more than 377000 people. And last, but certainly not least, is the Department of Homeland Security, created in the aftermath of 9-11 on November 25th, 2002. Sure, it's all about keeping America safe, but more specifically, their focus is anti-terrorism, border security, immigration and customs, cybersecurity, and disaster prevention and response after taking on FEMA. The newest cabinet member, it is also the third largest, with a 2017 budget of more than $40.6 billion and over 240,000 employees. The current Secretary of Homeland Security is Kirstjen Nielsen, pending Senate approval, that is. All 15 department heads are in the line of succession, meaning that if the President, Vice President, Speaker of the House, and the President Poor Tempore of the U.S. Senate all died, these folks would be next up to take the President's spot. That's why Kiefer Sutherland became President that one time, even though he was just the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Wait a second. Was that real life? No, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just a TV show, come to think of it. The president nominates the department heads and presents them to the Senate to be approved by a simple majority, a.k.a. 51 of the 100 senators approve. The vice president doesn't need Senate approval as he or she is elected, but neither does the White House chief of staff, who is basically the president's personal assistant. Because the chief of staff manages the president's schedule and manages the White House staff, he or she is often seen as a gatekeeper 
keeper of sorts. The chief of staff actually isn't technically a part of the cabinet though. He or she is what we call a cabinet level official. Cabinet level officials attend cabinet meetings but are not official cabinet members. It includes the trade representative, director of national intelligence, ambassador to the United Nations, the OMB director, the CIA director, the EPA administrator, and SBA administrator. You're all fired. All four are fired. Go home. Cabinet members, except the vice president, can be fired by the president fairly easily. Yeah, the current president probably has made that quite evident. All cabinet members are subject to impeachment by the House of Representatives if they act up. Now, here's the thing. I haven't even got to the individual federal agencies that both fall under the umbrella of the departments or are independent agencies. You know, like the FBI, CIA, Federal Trade Commission, Social Security Administration, National Park Service, Service, Corporation for Public Broadcasting, NASA, and many others I am sure you have also heard of. For the most part, they are all part of the executive branch as well. How many federal agencies are there? Well, I had a really hard time figuring this out. I honestly don't think anyone really knows. There might be 430, according to one source I found, or there might just be 115, according to the Administrative Conference of the United States, which recently printed, quote, There is no authoritative list of government government agencies, unquote. We do know that there are approximately 4 million people who work for the federal government. Probably. Maybe? That number is not for sure either. There's also all the state and local workers who get federal aid, not to mention the millions of contractors who also work for the federal government. The bottom line is the executive branch of government is huge. When I see diagrams in government textbooks that look like this, I just sort of chuckle. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It's not just the president and his cabinet. We're talking about a huge team of people that work underneath them. Millions of employees. Hundreds of billions of dollars. The cabinet has a lot of power and they do a lot to help run this country. They are a force to be reckoned with. Thanks to Ian for suggesting that I make a video about the president's cabinet. Ian is a longtime and loyal supporter of the channel on Patreon, and he's just a really smart young man who gives me hope for the future. So thank you, Ian. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next Friday. Thanks to Mr. Veet for creating this great video. Now, this video only included the departments that were actually created. There are actually many departments that were scheduled to be created, but never were. So if that interests you, comment in the description because I've actually considered making a video about this topic.